We'll go to Kent Spencer to start. Yeah, Chris, after the Kentucky game, you kind of mentioned the fact that you'd like to see your guys, you know, do a better job of, of hitting open threes. When it comes to that, is that just the is the fix just getting up a, a, a ton of shots? Um, you know, in the gym, or, or is there anything else you, you can kind of do to, to to give them a little bit more confidence there? Yeah, I mean, it's – that's a tough one. I, I think we just have to continue to take uh, good open threes. Um, I think we have to be cognizant of, um, you know, the time and score and the context of the shot. You know, if we, you know, just miss two or three wide open threes in a row, or, you know, if we turn the ball over, is it early in the shot clock? But – you know, we just, uh, it's not like we've got to make, you know, nine or 10 more of them. We just got to hit a couple of them. And, um, you know, we have better shooters than I think the last three games have shown. Um, but having said that, they got to go in. And, um, you know, we, we got to worry, Kent, more about running uh, our offense harder uh, with more purpose. I think getting cheap baskets, uh, pushing the pace way more than we are or have been. Um, that's that's more of a concern than, than making a few more open ones, but that would certainly help. Go to Shannon and then Russ. Uh, hey, Coach. In the preseason, we uh, asked a lot about team leadership and who was going to step forward. And Malik being injured, um, it's a little different situation for him not participating. But through these first seven games, who do you see has really emerged as, um, you know, guy or guys that have stepped forward and, and taken the team on their back? I don't know if I'd say anybody's taken their the team on their back, but I, I think the players um, that our guys look to, Shannon, are Carleek and David. You know, I think they, um, you know, they have the ball in their hands a lot. Um, they're the point of our attack on defense. They got to keep the ball in front of them out on the perimeter. Uh, they're two of our more experienced players. Um, you know, so I think that those two guys in particular have probably, um, you know, done more leading than anybody. But, you know, again, we're not a finished product. Uh, they, they have to continue to, to get better in that area, uh, specifically Dave. And then I think Carleke even has to be, a little bit more vocal than he's been. To Russ? Yeah, Chris, going into this 19-game, uh, remaining 19-game ACC schedule, how, how do you think uh, this league stacks up this year, maybe compared to your last couple of years? People are saying it's not quite as strong, and do you see a dominant team? Um, I mean, it's just – it's. I think it's too early to tell in terms of a dominant team. I mean, I, there's been – you know, some teams have only played one or two ACC games, including us. So we, I think there, um, there, there's a lot that remains to be seen. I don't think that there is a dominant team, uh, maybe like there's been in years past or dominant teams. I mean, a couple of years ago, there were three number one seeds out of this conference. So I don't think, um, you know, that's what our conference looks like this year. But um, that doesn't mean that it's not very competitive. I think we've got some, you know, young players and some young teams uh, some teams that may not be historically the uh, the front runners in the conference, but we've got some teams that have taken steps up as a program. So, uh, but again, I think it's too early to assess. Yeah, yeah. Quick follow up on that. Based on just the you know the little sample we have, it looks like it's going to be pretty unpredictable based on uh, some of the scores already with. Uh, Georgia Tech and Clemson kind of come into the forefront in some games and that sort of thing. Do you you think that's going to be the case, the unpredictability? I, I think if you're comparing it to maybe years past, like, you know, we, we lost to both of those teams last year. And uh, I thought both of them were extremely talented. You know, I think Clemson's carved out an identity over the last few years under Coach Brunel. I think Josh Pastner's team has got one of the best backcourts in our league. So, you know, maybe historically Carolina is a team that uh, beats Georgia Tech. But, you know, again, I, you don't play the games on paper and you don't play them historically. And I, I knew how good those two teams that you just spoke of were to start the year. So to me, it wasn't a huge surprise and, and really hasn't been a huge surprise. Go to Matt and then Kent. Hey, Coach, this is Matt McGavitt with Sports Illustrated. Uh, during pregame shoot-around for the Kentucky game, Charles Menon was taking part, and he looked pretty decent. Uh, do you expect him to maybe play against Boston College, or is he still not far along enough in his uh, rehab? 
No, I, I think anybody can sort of do their deal in warm-ups. You know, it's another thing to be guarding people and and uh, and running full speed and cutting and reacting. I haven't gone through it myself. So, you know, Charles won't play this weekend. Uh, you know, we're hopeful in the next week to two. But, you know, there, there's got to – you know, there's got to be some confidence in him in, in terms of movement and, and, and feeling ready to to play again before uh, we're going to put him out there. Kent? Yeah, Chris, Josh kind of talked about it before in here, and, and you kind of mentioned the fact that you guys want to run your offense better and, and get up and down a little bit. You know, part of it, I think you mentioned it after the game the other night, is some of the guys, they they get caught maybe watching Carleek and, and David a little bit with the ball in their hands. Is that a fine line? Because you want those two guys to make plays, but I, I would imagine you want everybody else to be active in the offense as well. Yeah, I mean, our offense isn't, um, you know, contrary to what it, what it may look like sometimes, we don't practice, you know, one guy using a ball screen and everybody else watching him uh, do his thing. And uh, the sooner we realize that, and transfer what we are trying to teach um, in practice to the game, then it, it's going to look like that at times. And then I've got to figure out ways to in, involve other players uh, with, with besides playing off those two's penetration. Go to Jody and then Tim. Yeah, Chris, you were talking a minute ago about the ACC and the in, in, in how the league is. Uh, Boston College is a team that their record might be a little deceiving because of the early season schedule they play. What what have you seen with with these guys as you as you prepare for for Saturday? Well, I mean, I think they've played one of the best schedules in the country. I mean, they played uh, for Villanova, they've played Florida, they've played Minnesota. I mean, they go on the road last night, so um, you know, there's a lot of teams that could have that record. They're a talented team. Their backcourt is phenomenal. Uh, both Tabs uh, and Heath can create their own shot at any point in time with consistency. You know, they've got a, a veteran in Steph Mitchell who brings the ball up and presents a unique challenge at the front court. So we, uh, we have our hands full on Saturday. Uh, I don't take any stock in what their record is because, like I said, you know, I'm looking at their talent level and, and – you know, the fact they were down 12 or 14 on the road last night and then had a one-point uh, lead with 20 seconds to go tells you all all you need to know about their firepower. We, we've got to be a different team on both ends of the floor each and every game, and this is a big game for us. Tim? Yeah, Chris, I've got two questions, one serious, one less so. Uh, for the serious one is, can you give us an update on Malik and uh, what the, the timetable is for him? and what impact he might have uh, when he comes back. Yeah, so he had surgery, uh, Tim, November 11th, um, which, you know, again, here in about 10 days or so, he'll be at two months, uh, which is eight weeks. At that point, he'll be able to do a little bit more. They'll continually, uh, you know, look at the imaging uh, to see how the, the, the fracture of the bone is healing. And, um, you know, 12 weeks is usually a minimum. Um, and it'll depend on, you know, how Malik feels. And we don't want to jeopardize his health. We got to put him in, in as good a shape as we can get him in uh, when he's not able to, you know, be on his feet and running. And then when he's at that point, you know, we'll make a determination, you know, a around the beginning of February where, where we'll be. Okay. My other question is, uh, given that uh, Coach Satterfield has retaliated, uh, with toilet paper, do you see that battle escalating or uh, are you going to call a truce? Um, who knows? You know, who knows, Tim? We um, we got it pretty good. You know, Christy and I, when we to toilet paper this house, you know, it was sort of symbolic. Um, you know, I, I think that uh, he had several different people helping from our athletic director to their kids to his kids. I mean, there were people all over our lawn that I saw on video the la last time I checked it out. So, this may be an escalation. <laughs> Thank you. To Matt. Hey, Coach. Matt McEvery again. Kind of building off of that last question, since it is New Year's Eve and all, do you have a New Year's resolution for uh, this team and this program? Uh, not really. I'm not a big resolution guy. Um, I think resolutions are for quitters because no one ever keeps to a resolution. So I try to just do my deal. Um, you know, each and every day, regardless of whether it's December 31st or, you know, February 23rd. I mean, it doesn't really matter to me. 
Coach, it looks like all the questions. Thanks for joining us. Happy Thanks, New Year.